there, I'm Ashley Smith from 13 News Now Daybreak. Every Thursday, I get the chance to introduce you to the people making a mark, and I'm lucky to share some of those stories today. Everyone you'll meet today is from right here in Hampton Roads. These are your neighbors, your mentors, the people who make our area a great place to call home. And that includes a group that's inspiring a love of reading. There's a nonprofit on the peninsula sending books to kids each month for free. It's all to encourage learning and imagining. Let me show you how the DeGood Foundation is making a mark. Oh, the places they'll go. You can go out there and achieve your dreams and make whatever you want happen. And that's at the absolute foundation of all things books, and literature, and literacy. Kids across the peninsula are expanding their imaginations thanks to the DeGood Foundation. For us, books were incredibly important to not replace the work of the library or the schools, but to enhance it, to give them another avenue they can receive books. The nonprofit, a local affiliate of Dolly Parton's Imagination Library, mails free books each month to kids up to age five. Well, the early years for children ages zero to five, that's where most neurological connections are made in the brain. So the more you're reading, the more words you're exposed to, and the more literature that you're exposed to, the more your brain grows and increases. Executive Director Kyle DeGood first learned of Dolly's program while living in Hawaii. It was the greatest thing to watch all these kids run to the mailbox once a month because they knew Dolly's book was there for them. He founded the DeGood Foundation in 2017 to address children's mental health and illiteracy here at home. So far, the nonprofit has mailed out more than 25,000 books, averaging 15 1500 a month. They're custom printed, custom made. They come with reading tips in the covers. They have the logo on it. Sometimes they get a letter from Dolly. It's a whole amazing thing where every tiny detail was picked to make this extra special for each child. The nonprofit also focuses on kids care. The Bags of Hope program provides care kits to sick children in partnership with hospitals like CHKD, where they've delivered more than 250 kits. Kyle says the foundation promotes the message that children are the future and they can change the world. We want to inspire children to dream more, learn more, care more, and be more, all of which can be attained through books. Get it right when they're young, so that way you're not fixing them later when they're stuck. So here's how it works. Kids five and under on the peninsula can sign up to get monthly books from the nonprofit for free. You can also partner, volunteer, or donate. Just visit the thedegoodfoundation.org. And if you don't live on the peninsula, visit imaginationlibrary.com to check for your neighborhood. Well, pushing for change with every paint stroke. An artist in the 757 is combating child abuse with a mural he created in Norfolk. Here's how he's using his creativity to make a mark on a critical community issue. Across the front of 757 Maker Space in Norfolk, Parish Majestic painted sunshine, flowers, and waves. Well, that's what I'm doing out here in 757, bringing the waves of change. The vision, a community free of child abuse, abandonment, and neglect. I have children. I have people who have been in those situations. This touches home with me. I feel like I need to, how can I help? The artist joined forces with the Samaritan House and Fashion for Awareness to paint the mural Giving Flowers in April for Child Abuse Prevention Month. We use the blue and the, the blue for that month and the purple for the Samaritan House. For, and also that represents domestic violence and human trafficking. 757 Makerspace CEO and creative director Bo Turner says the mural highlights the corner. Now you got people that stop, they come up to get their picture. And the cause. And it does start to address that bigger issue and doing that through the visual element. Parrish says it took him about 23 hours to preserve the concept in his artwork, but he says preserving the rights of vulnerable children is a much greater task. The handprints represent the children. They're the most at risk. Parrish hopes people see the mural as a call to action. Look around your neighborhood and see what the issues are and see what you can tackle. See what, it, what can you offer? How can you help? See how you can fix the small problems around you first. And you can see the Giving Flowers mural and more of Parrish's work at 757 Makerspace in Norfolk. And if you or someone you know is a victim of abuse in any form, you can call the Samaritan House 24-hour hotline. That number is 757-430-2120. Well, you know, lots of kids share the dream of becoming a professional musician, but they don't all share the same opportunities to make their dreams come true. Well, one man has brought jazz artists and fans together for a night of music and an experience for music students. 
Smooth sounds fill Norfolk art venues for the sixth annual Church Street Jazz Series. If you like pop, you can still like jazz. If you're a gospel person, you can still listen to jazz. If you like country, because they all have elements of jazz in them. And the event name is a nod to the present and the past. Church Street was like Black Wall Street here in Norfolk. That's where all of the black businesses were, the doctors, the lawyers, the restaurants. Series founder Jay Lang builds an impressive lineup of musicians to sell tickets, but he says the best seats are already taken. <laughs> Through the H.J. Lang Foundation, middle and high school students take classes and workshops hosted by jazz artists and meet industry leaders. Yeah, cases look beat up, but some nice instruments. Proceeds from ticket sales and donations go to the foundation. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. You don't have an instrument at all. And at each concert, the nonprofit surprises one student with a brand new instrument. A brand new trumpet. Lang says he has a heart for every musician in the making, like Jada Watson and Mario Parker at Booker T. Washington High School in Norfolk. Other musical students, how we come together as one, it's so beautiful. When you listen to music, you feel it. When you feel music, you generally feel joy. We were there as Lang donated instruments to the school's music yeah, program. Bundy. Bundy, uh -huh. yeah. Lang says he plans to continue the jazz yeah. series for years to come because opening the doors to each show means opening doors for the next generation of artists. I don't want to see a kid not be able to um, expand their musical horizons, grow their craft, and add to the world of music. There are still more stories of people making a mark. A lot of clients I was coming across in my social work endeavors basically didn't have housing. So I was like, oh wait, let me see what I can do here to help with you know, bridging this gap. out Zillow lately, the housing market is red hot and rising prices and fewer choices make it tough for a lot of buyers. But I talked to a local real estate agent who's making a mark going above and beyond to help people get from how to home. Hey, I got everything I asked for plus an extra room. I only went in three bedroom and then ended up getting a garage, four bedroom, water view. David Leader says when his career changed. I got a lot going on with traveling for work. It made sense at the time to be renting. Yeah, so this is one of my favorite rooms in the house. His idea of home changed. It doesn't make sense anymore. <laughs> time to get my own house and really just be comfortable and have my foundation set up. Such a vibey feeling out here just to wake up and get some fresh air. He recently closed on his Norfolk town home despite an aggressive seller's market. And he says it's all thanks to his real estate agent. Shout out to Winter. Her patience and, and just advice and an understanding of how this, the, the real estate process works really gave me just the full on respect that I know I can trust her decision on getting the right property for me. Winter Savage switched from social work to real estate in 2019, taking with her a passion for helping people. And a lot of clients I was coming across in my social work endeavors basically didn't have housing. So I was like, oh wait, let me see what I can do here to help with you know bridging this gap. Like much of the country, Hampton Roads is seeing higher home sales prices and lower inventory on the market. Winter says education is the key to home buying. Knowing the steps ahead of time kind of gives you motivation versus not knowing the steps and trying to just jump out there head first. She offers a monthly class to first time home buyers for free. Everyone needs someone that they can talk to, especially when it comes to making business decisions. And this room right here is gonna be my art room. While the road to closing isn't easy, Winter says it's all worth it to see people like David happy and home. It just feels rewarding because they understand like their voice was heard, they got what they wanted and they could take their time. Cause I could have rushed it, could have got anything else, but this one felt, for, felt right for me.
Winter's monthly class for first time home buyers is in Suffolk and again it is free. We posted a link with more info in this story on our website. You know, people say you can't understand someone until you've walked a mile in their shoes. Well, meet a man equipped to help both cancer patients and nonprofits. He's making a mark by sharing valuable life lessons with others. Eric Newman says he does not waste time because at a very young age, he began to wonder how much time he had left. I was diagnosed at the age of three with hepatoblastoma, which is a very rare form of liver cancer. They called my parents in, gave me a very slim chance of survival. They didn't know where the cancer had potentially spread. Two years later, Eric was in remission. I truly believe if I can beat cancer, there's nothing in this world that I can't do. But the loss of two cousins to pediatric cancer inspired him to found the Rock Solid Foundation in 2009. The nonprofit has donated thousands of play sets and hospital ready bags to kids fighting the disease. I had a journal and I just picked the journal up and I wrote down a simple word hope on a piece of paper. In this prison cell that I feel, I feel like cancer puts so many people in, hope was the key that opened the cell. We can't change the fact that families have cancer, but what we can change is how they live with it. Eric says he thinks outside the box to fulfill his nonprofit's mission. Now he's helping other nonprofits do the same through his book, what hope looks like. And this book is designed to where it, you can start a nonprofit or start your business within three months if you follow this framework, and then you get to your purpose, you get to your reason of existence, and it's to love another human being. Breaking the mold may not be easy, but Eric says there's no better time to do it than now. People think it takes a long time to change the world. I don't believe so. Cancer was hard. But if I have pain and I want to take that pain and turn it into a purpose, it cannot be that hard. This next group, well, don't let the name fool you. Their mascot is cute and cuddly, but the nonprofit Pandas Fight Against Cancer is a force to be reckoned with. PJ Reed thought a panda would be the perfect symbol for his nonprofit. A panda, me, cute, cuddly, big, what a perfect combo. Despite the comparison, he says it's not really about him at all. It just symbolizes hope, strength, unity to us. Pandas Fight Against Cancer helps ease financial burdens for families fighting the disease. We move forward into making it a nonprofit by doing small gatherings of fundraising, selling the merchandise with the panda logo on it. Hallie Trigero says their products change throughout the year to draw attention to different types of cancer. In October, we'll do something pink for breast cancer awareness. Um, in September, we'll do something gold for um, childhood cancer awareness. Hallie says the nonprofit made donations to three organizations and 18 families in need last year. And we were able to raise over 50 grand. And they plan to raise even more this year, fueled by their mission for no one to fight cancer alone. Community is everything. So just, you know, strength and hope and unity is, is what will get us there. There are still more stories of people making a mark. Stay with us. an exciting update to share about a making a mark story that aired in 2021 and that's what I told you about pageant winner Ayana Johnson she's from Suffolk and was born with sickle cell disease well Ayana is devoted to bringing awareness to this disease and over the summer she competed in the Miss Virginia's outstanding teen competition and won she told me she's eager to use her title to educate people about sickle cell disease so I can personally relate to those across the state of Virginia who have chronic illnesses. I understand what that's like to go through, and so I use my platform as a microphone for those who can't advocate for themselves. 
And hey, the next time you're in Walmart, you might see Ayana's face on a poster near the cash register as an ambassador for CHKD. Congratulations. And she's not the only teen making a mark. A nonprofit made up of former dancers is now mentoring the next generation, helping young girls access their full potential. Old Michaela Parker wants to be a meteorologist. My love of science has pushed me through this. Sierra Mitchell, also 16, is an aspiring engineer and actress. Ever since I saw Disney Channel, I thought you would say, that's going to be me someday. Different ambitions brought together by a common passion. It was for the love of dance. Dr. Aisha Williamson was a hot ice line dancer in the Norfolk State University Spartan Legion Marching Band in 2000. And we were able to develop sisterhood. And what we have been able to do is bond throughout the years. In 2012, she and her dance line sisters formed the Ice for Life Foundation. A nonprofit that helps develop and encourage young women through the art of dance. Perfectly Pretty is the foundation's mentorship program for middle and high school girls. We would come back just to speak with Hot Ice, the current squads. But then we decided, hey, if we are doing such great things with young women, 18 through 21, what could we do with young girls? Dr. Williamson says the nonprofit now works with about 120 girls weekly and goes far beyond dancing. We're teaching young people the importance of other people, the importance of showing respect, being a young lady, being able to give back, being a scholar, a mentor. We're teaching them through our wisdom how to be productive citizens, I think, in the in community. <laughs> Tools for success to mold the next generation of movers and shakers. I want my confidence to be at the highest level and I want to be able to smile and say I love my body, I love my body so much. <laughs> It's no secret, it's tough to be a kid these days. From school to social media, it's more important than ever to encourage kids to take charge of their learning. In Virginia Beach, Indian Lakes Elementary School is bringing career exploration and self-discovery into the classroom. Like this? Yep. Yeah. Blend it out for the, just, the skin tone. Yep. Skin care, hygiene, makeup. When it comes to cosmetology, anyone else needs some disposables? These students are learning it all, but there's more to this club than meets the eye. We talk about get a little bit more in depth with what it means to be beautiful, um, not just physical appearance, but on the inside of it. And then we translate that through the gift Ooh, of you artistry. Can flip it over, or I can just give you another one until you get the look that you oh, want. Really? Kimberly Mosley is a teacher at Indian Lakes Elementary in Virginia Beach. She leads the Future Makeup Artist Club. I've I always wanted to incorporate like what I do outside of work as a makeup artist with my students here. It's one of the new student-centered choice clubs held during the school day to expose kids to different career opportunities. Um, we've already got community members who are looking at hosting dance clubs, chef club. Um, we've got kids asking for everything from animation to drama, um, different science options. Mathlete Club. Instructional technology specialist Kelly Hoggard brought the idea to the school after many students expressed interest in after school clubs. And so I started to kind of brainstorm the possibility of finding a space during the academic day when kids are already here that they could explore some of their passions. Some really tiny round ones. The clubs are held weekly like during one. the school's adjusted dismissal day. Principal Dexter Warren says he gladly gave the idea the green light. Now you can be able to give students exposure to experience different things, especially during the pandemic. I think I can make the blush. The school has hosted 13 clubs since December, including 3D printing, world travel, fantasy football, and of course, makeup. Kimberly says teachers, administrators, and community members are the best people to help students express themselves. They're looking at these YouTube videos. Why not better to see someone that you work with every day who is literally a part of your life, can be a mentor to you, show you how to do it. Already going, and we're going in full momentum, okay? No regrets, all right? No regrets. Chantel no Page regrets. is hard to miss. Transition to hit. Full on transition. Once we're transitioned back, it's not about getting the big stuff. It's about slowing the ball down. And it's not it's just because she's 6'1". Transition. Swig. Yeah. Yes, let's go. 
Oh. And look, I'm getting stuff from the top shelf, okay? From the top shelf. While everybody else walking around here with step stools. I'm living my best reach life. Okay? Reach high, reach high. The volleyball coach at Deep Creek Middle and High Schools says she also has a mean snap. spike. Yeah, ooh, that's a lot of snap there, child. Her love of the game, <laughs> a close match for her love of yeah, the community. I, I love it. You love it. We all love it. Chantel volunteers as a coach for a youth team. <laughs> teaching volleyball to girls from underprivileged communities. There are so many other people that are just like me that just wanted a chance. They just wanted a chance. They could be great if you just give them a chance. And so I wanted to be that chance. Come on, grandmamas, let's go. Some of her girls have gone on to play competitively or attend college on volleyball scholarships. They made it so that they had opportunities elsewhere to, to go to school and take that major that they didn't think they were going to be able to take. I know how it feels to think, oh gosh, I want to be better. And to not imagine yourself at that place, but then to make it there and to see how unbelievable it really, truly is. I love it. I love these kids, man. Yeah, spot corner. The game changing lives for the better, just as it did for Chantel. I've watched these girls, especially a lot of the ones that I have coached, I've, I've watched them kind of come into their own, kind of understand that it's okay to just love who they are. DOL 3, 1, 2, 3, DOL! Let's go. Chantel's youth volleyball team plays year round and is open to girls ages 12 to 16. To sign up or learn more, email ChantelPage at Yahoo.com. And if you know someone or a group making a mark in your neighborhood, I want to know about it. Send me an email or get my attention on Facebook or Twitter. I hope you enjoyed these stories. It's really an honor to share them with you. And don't forget, new stories of those making a mark air every Thursday morning on 13 News Now Daybreak. I hope to see you then. For now, I'm Ashley Smith. Thanks for joining me.